what we're going to have now is just a moment of discussion. We really wanted like, to open this up to you, that you were waiting for patiently all of this long, and you probably have a lot of questions. And so we have a few questions that we'd like to do the panel, but this is really an, uh, the idea is to have a discussion, like you guys to ask to each other, and you guys to ask to the artists and have more like a conversation. Um, so I could start with one question, a personal question, I think, um, and then we can just move on to some other questions, right? So we'll have many questions, but I think one that we shared with Adeti at the beginning of this, um, conceiving this project, this symposium, was like, we would like to hear from people that is actively working in, in Latin America about what are the challenges that you think are what, what do you think are the challenges that you have uh, in working in this field, in technology, in, in the context of Latin America? And if you think that um, creates possibilities, what is the framework? Like, if that is like, empowering or is actually something that doesn't give you any benefit, how you uh, produce something productive for the, from those um, conditions that, that you produce work and you teach? No challenges. <laughs> I don't know. Um, um, yes, yeah, so when you ask about the challenge, uh, I, uh, I can speak um, from Brazil point of view. Uh, I think it's uh, We've been working for a long time. I mean, in, in, in Brazil, there is a tradition of overcome certain problems or conditions. Sometimes, when you don't have the proper material or the technology, uh, we used to think about this creatively. And I think for me, it's an advantage. It's, even it's, it's not a, a challenge to how overcome certain problems, but it's an advantage if you take this as a principle or a starting point uh, redirecting this creativity to what you can do in, in the art field. So I think it's uh, a good see. I, 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 I see the students, I see, for instance, one of the projects I showed this uh, last project uh, when I worked with the, the Telebar Sphere and creating the dome, now we are in this state of um, situation where we have the 3D machines, the kind of revolution in 3D, in the physical. World. But in the same, in, in, in a certain way, uh, it, it somehow I need to rethink my process because when I work the, with the 3D, sometimes I need to organize the process or design the process quite well to be able to send it to the 3D and have a kind of result. And it's kind of, I'm not very, I'm feeling very well with this. I'm not comfortable with this. But I'm living in that exact moment. Maybe some problems that I'm having with this dawn. Part of this is because it's, there is a structure that I, I set up for myself to follow. But I like the other week, so the way I, I built the breathing, for instance, I was walking on the streets and I get into the store and I look at things in, inside the store in a totally different way that there is the reason of those these those uh, device were there for the functionality of them originally, but I look in a um, you know, uh, kind of um, scene in a completely wet way. So, uh, in that sense, I think it's the, the creativity is for me is the, the way of thinking and, and approach these, these things, especially from uh, Brazil. <laughs> well, I mean, for me, it's, 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 kind of, uh, um, it's complicated to, uh, question because I've I mean, been living in the United States for quite a while uh, by now. Um, and I, uh, I mean, I've been in the United States, uh, even I'm working for 10 years, and before that, I've been back and forth. Um, the, um, uh, but, uh, but I do keep the, the, the you know the context of uh, for Latin America, the common like, by decision, like you know, 
the subject of the, the, the context of, of where I, I, I think the work. Um, and I, I kind of import a lot of way of, 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 of thinking that how will I op will operate there over here even though I, I may have more resources here. Um, and a lot of things, you know, what uh, what was saying, I think they would, uh, a lot of when we talk about the tactical, uh, probably well, the rest of the world is tactical, you know, it's, it's, uh, in, in general in relation to technology. Uh, you know, uh, there's, uh, there was one this one reference that for for that is very, uh, I mean, for me being in, 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 in South America was very obvious. Uh, very important was this idea of anthropophagia, you know, in a way, kind of the cannibalism to anything that is foreign to you, and and and, and you just don't care what you, what is coming to you, you just you just want it, and, uh, and instead of resisting it, you just eat it, you know, because in the process of kind of deglutition, you you will you will make it yours, and uh, and that's something that I I try to to work a lot of here with my students. This is something I bring back. Here with my American students is that uh, just like fuck out all sorry <laughs> <laughs> forget about other shit <laughs> just copy the work you know some, you know just take the work and just do it again you know, because in the process of just making a project again you, you will not do it again ever it's just you know and, and this is again again this. At least for me, it's the idea of that you are every time you take something that it comes from technology, you buy it. And when you, you know, uh, the work I've been presenting today is always you, you, you take a piece, you take a history, a piece of an entire, you know, development that you're taking hundreds of years, a memory that, you know, that you're just, you know, and just, you cannot acknowledge for all that. So you just grab it, kind of, you know, rub it. And that's precisely the kind of a tactical attitude. Uh, Sometimes I find myself in, and I'm, I work in a research university, you know, which is a huge pressure for, which I don't account for it, you know, getting big grants and and patent stuff and all that. Uh, but the, the, the drive for 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 you know for the novelty and the product sometimes uh, kind of kills, uh, you know, the other idea that. And you can reinvent from what is already there, you know, that kind of a much more efficient, you know, manner of operating. Um, uh, I, I, I don't want to romanticize the, the, the notion of Latin America, which is very easy. I, and, I, and I work, and I think we all somehow work with that, with that you know, with that, with that stereotype, with that project, we use it. We, are, we have to be astute of that. But um, <coughs> uh, I, I think there are certain mechanisms of operating that sometimes are, 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 are necessary. And it's interesting now, for me, that, that I also work in relation to urbanism, you know, there is a lot of, uh, coming from the south, there's a lot of experiences right now that are being imported and then at the level of politics, for example, you know, the strategies I have to do, you know, coming from Medellin, from Brazil, you know, where to handling social programs and all that, you know, that somehow, there is there, there is a moment I think there is a, a shift at this stage that uh, 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 that is very interesting in, in the kind of the, between the dialogue you know between the north and the sur you know, the north and the south uh, and perhaps you know the, the same thing that drives you to organize this event which for me is like why you wouldn't do this you know, <laughs> is is the idea of, of that is you know there is there is something going on. Uh, that, uh, in terms of production of knowledge, you know, which we usually in the South have been always that we're seeping the knowledge. And this, uh, right now it's kind of seem to the paradigm is starting to be shift. Uh, and I don't talk about this in terms of, you know, change, uh, kind of shift of big things, but just it's something that is much more calm and interesting going on. Uh, and somehow the projects, and these projects, pedagogical projects, are a reflection of that. Yes, I pretty much agree with you. And uh, in the case of the master's degree program, uh, when we decided, uh, we thought about producing a program 
that could uh, think from scratch, start from scratch, not consume uh, technology because technology is not neutral, because we don't be um, prisoners of the logic of the consumerist market. Uh, so basically, uh, students are developing their own tools. That's very important for us. We have brilliant teachers that can uh, teach that, um, and they are very consciousness about this thing of starting from scratch, not consume. Just we we should start from scratch. Um, in the last years, uh, it is quite impossible to import uh, devices in Argentina and technology. So, for example, no more Arduino in Argentina. So, <laughs> from scratch, <laughs> we start. We, we develop our own interfaces. So, um, it is somehow bad, but at the same time, it's good because it's a challenge for us, and uh, we should be. Capable, capable, capable to develop our own stuff. So uh, I think that's a real challenge, and I think uh, it's very rich. It's a very rich experience, and I agree with Gustavo that it's a way of producing new knowledge. When you develop your tool, when you think about your tool, it's not it's not just like doing something. It's about conceiving that it's about thinking about that so you are producing no knowledge okay. well in <coughs> mexico uh, one of the big problems is politics there like the neoliberalism all these uh, governments that are more uh, driven by enterprises by economics <coughs> like these days has been uh, huge manifestations in mexico city because one of the public schools, the Politecnico Nacional, uh, that is uh, more focused on science and technology, and they uh, make a reform, no? all this trend of reforming things, but they change the program of the uh, students, and uh, they reduce the, the signatures, they reduce the, the knowledge they are, they are giving to the students, so they, they just uh, want like a technical level, not uh, engineers or, or scientists, and they are doing this to, to dismantle no, the, the, the Politecnico Nacional, and uh, because they want like uh, uh, the north of the country to be just for maquilas, no, just technical uh, people that are going to work into factories just to repeat the process, no, and not to give new meaning to, to, to things, no, and. These days has been huge manifestations as we haven't been seen in the city of the students uh, uh, fighting against that, no? And th it's a problem to be the uh, neighbors, no, of the United States, no? We say in Mexico, too far from God, too close to the United States, no? <laughs> 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 and uh, in, in, in a way, like, uh, the things that, like in Argentina, that, that uh, uh, they, they don't have the, the tools, the import, uh, possibility to import things. In Mexico, we have less issues into that. No, like we can import from China or from. And uh, but like you say now, uh, uh, the workshop I'm doing is about obsolescence. No, about how to to get into to production uh, of knowledge uh, through the, the less essential tools. No, because now the trend is uh, on electronics is like a. You have to, to learn a lot of things to produce, no? You have to, to, to the, the, the curvature of knowledge is uh, too long, no? And sometimes people need uh, fast ways to do things, no? Like uh, the, the uh, idea of a prototype about uh, a permanent thing, no? And, uh, I Any questions? We, we really want to open up this to questions. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, anyone can answer, but where do you start your research? Like, what methodologies, methodologies do you use when you first like answering a question? 
<laughs> I just don't have my tautology. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm just curious about what I just asked because I think the, the problem is not to answer the question, but it's to, to build a, a, a very good question. And I think this is what miss a lot in the process of researching when you are starting. Sometimes you don't depart from a, a good question, a question that is consistent enough to keep you on track of something. So you need to build that question. And I used to say that in, in art, it's curious because the, our methodology is, is a, a little bit different from science in the sense that in science you have a very clear question sometimes and you have a, a methodology for that and you set some experiments, you have results and you write about this data. So uh, of course I put this in a very simple way, but uh, the question in art is something that is is not clear enough. We, we know kind of the result of something because intuitively we know that there is something there that you want to achieve, you, something that you can't foresee somehow. But if you don't make a, a very good question, you can get lost. <coughs> yeah, I, I agree with that. I think it's a it's a question of questions. Uh, when I mentor my students, uh, I, uh, I, the first thing I ask them is to um, to have a um, challenging question. That's the first thing. And it's so difficult to, to have a good question. It's really difficult. Sometimes they, they take month and month to have a good question. And in art, you only have questions. You never have answers. So <laughs> it's just uh, the question is uh, it's your orientation. It's like your compass. But you will never answer that question. It's just like a compass to to, to go around to to discover new dimensions. But you will never answer it. If you answer it, you have a problem. <laughs> yeah, that's a, a And the thing with experimentation, no? that uh, during experimentation, that it brings new questions and it, it uh, develops new process, no? and then it uh, derives to new uh, paths. No? If you don't experiment with things, you don't make uh, the conclusions or the ideas that you can uh, produce, you have to be working and try to be intuitive on what you are doing. Probably you are doing it and you are not clear about what are you doing. But then when you go back, you start to see a clear picture of you know, things and that uh, keeps the research going. You know? Mexico, 
and <laughs> and uh, she was working in her thesis. I was her her mentor, and at a certain point, she told me, "I'm not, I'm not being able to to write my ideas now." Her, the written thesis. So <coughs> she asked me, "Can I paint them?" Yes, of course you can paint them. You you can make paintings. So part of her, her thesis is is expressed by paintings. So we are we are used to, to express our ideas in a, in a, yeah through language. But there are other ways of expressing ideas and painting and visual. Uh, tools are good ways to, to express ideas. So. Uh, well, thanks, uh, Paula and Adeti, for putting this together. This has been a real uh, exciting evening, and I have many, many questions, but I just want to uh, give you one. Um, tonight, I've heard many different angles on tactics, uh, sort of the tactics of uh, crossing borders, um, the, ta the tactics of democratization, uh, tactics of subverting neoliberal sort of uh, institutionalization. Uh, but I was also, I'm curious as to the relationship between tactics and the, the tactile, the, uh, the physical, right, the, the, the sensual, the ability to feel. And so if you could speak to that relationship between the politics of tactics and the importance of tactility in the arts. <coughs> uh, well, I've been trying to, I mean, I've just said word, that's why I say it quickly past the, the, the microphone, because the, I, I Basically, my motto, uh, I run kind of, uh, uh, final product studios and, uh, for undergrad and graduate students. And uh, my studios are about app thinking, uh, which I don't have really a definition of, and I'm in trouble now, but one is one. And for me, uh, it, 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 it's, it's, I think they start to appear, you know, one is this idea that the body thinks, and I tend you know, I'm trying to con construct something less poetic in the way to express it. Uh, but also, I, I think I started to have a sense, for example, the cinema, contemporary cinema studies also start, talks about the tactile in opposition to the visual. Uh, you know, where, 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 where the, the body starts to engage in, in a way of understanding, even that is feel, you know, uh, in a different way that is not purely, uh, uh, you know, no, perhaps, perhaps we need it uh, in, in a time of our, of, of our kind of a, a process of progress to to give a primacy to the visual. You know, and, uh, in my in my view, with architecture, is uh, right now it's a big, huge problem because the the the, 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 the predominance of form, which is, is, a, is a kind of a, is a dictatorship that in the last 30, 40 years and exacerbated by the digital tools where we mostly can't think anything anymore, you know, almost a kind of because we because yes we can. Uh, it kind of having sort of a formal hysteria. Um, it's, it's starting to have also a counter reaction we have to do with this other, you know, more underground trend we have to do with materiality, uh, with uh, politics, uh, which is is coming mostly and a, a much more, uh, how do you say, uh, uh, not so uh, mainstream, but very, very, very concrete. And, and I'm not necessarily to, you know, have to be lefty thinking. It's just it's a reality you know, of, of the of the variation, you know? and um, and institutions even here in the United States are starting to, to will, will reflect very soon that, that change. I have a I have a thought about that. Because I've been thinking, I mean, I started thinking about that, and there is a really interesting relationship, actually. Uh, ta our tactile senses, right, it's all over our body, and it's the, the biggest, I mean, touch is the, our biggest, I mean, skin is our biggest organ, and it's all over, all over 
explained, right? We are not even aware that we're touching things, but we are all the time. We are quoting and everything. And the tactics of it's also so it's very invasive. And I feel like these other tactics that we're thinking or this uh, ta um, tactical way of, of making art with technology is also very invasive in the way that. If we follow this idea from the Certo, which is this tactical idea, right, that what we, the use we do of uh, the things, you know, the institutions create things, right, and give us those set of his implicit instructions, and then we start using it however we can, we start adapting it, we have, it's also very invasive, it's like touch, we don't even sit, it's there. We're doing that all the time until we start thinking. It's the same when we, is that kind of, funny thing that happens between consciousness and unconsciousness. Like when I once I'm starting thinking about how my foot is touching my shoe, then I become aware. When I start thinking how these artists are using technology, then I, I became aware of that it's a tactical way. And so I think there's that kind of a level of um, how do you say subtle 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 like <laughs> delicate boundary <laughs> delicate boundary between like when is conscious that that moment of of that sort of invasion that is happening we are touching we're doing tactile things without even thinking and we're doing that every and every sense is tactile no like uh, the sight you, the photons uh, move and touch no they 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 give like a, a like I told the holistic thing. A lot of the pieces are about input, no, and about perception and how machines can interact with their environment, no. And uh, like good of uh, machines with plants, no, that they uh, interact with a plant to to probably to use the plant as a as a sensor no? of reality, in a more physical way. Uh, antes de todo, muchas gracias por estar aquí. Yo sé que es un viaje muy largo para muchos. Uh, my question is just a general question for uh, any of you guys. Uh, as a fellow, as a fellow uh, Latin American, at the beginning of your careers, uh, did you experience any uh, obstacles or prejudice for being from Latin America? So, what do you mean, like? Within Latin America, you don't, you're not aware. <laughs> 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 I mean, like, we, we, uh, uh, like showing internationally. Yeah, internationally, when you go up to like, uh, Europe or other uh, parts of the world, did you experience any like, prejudice or any obstacles in between uh, the, your shells? It's, it's not like prejudice in a way, uh, but uh, there is a, a thing going on about hemispheres. Mm -hmm. Well, Mexico is the north hemisphere, no? But we are very south, no? In a way of language and, and uh, uh, like uh, international exhibitions, most you you see like a program of a uh, European exhibition and they call it international and most of the people is from northern hemisphere, no? Like Japanese or Korean or Germans, French and very few uh, Africans or Latin Americans. So <coughs> it's, it's very common that, that they uh, are not aware of what's going on below the equator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, in, the, in the main uh, uh, media art festivals and in the international media art scene, Latin America is very little represented. It's in the last years, I think, uh, we are participating more and more and they are uh, looking more at uh, what is what it is happening. Um, uh, three years ago, uh, Ars Electronica invited me as jury, and I was so glad because uh, they. But now they always have someone from Latin America because they think in Ars Electronica that there is something happening there. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they told me yeah. <coughs> We 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 think that the future is there. You are you are going, but um, again, it's like you. We need always like the external confirmation. It is very uh, yeah. 
it is very hard to, to make something. It's also that it's really far away. <laughs> yeah, right? And to ship any of these things, I mean, logistically, right? I can see it now. I live here now. It's so much easier. Yeah, well, but you, you know. from Buenos Aires to Asuncion. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, but if you, the world's happening here in Europe, those big festivals and things, to ship something from Argentina, the logistics of putting those robots in a box and sending it there, it's huge. Yeah. It happened with the, with the net art about. Yeah. No, there's a lot of books about net art, and, yeah. and, and yeah. There, uh, there's a huge scene in Latin America of uh, net artists, yeah, yeah. And, and, and they are not considered in this research. No, they all, always go to the same source to investigate. No, they don't try to, to develop new sources. No, try to, to break the boundaries. No, it's just what he's right. He's right. Mm -hmm. It's going on, <laughs> and that's not the distance. No, internet. <laughs> I was just thinking about uh, when Paula just said about this shipping. Uh, I think one, uh, of course, it's not because uh, you're from Latin America, but uh, when I take my my work with me on the airplane, for instance, breathing, and I, for the experience of showing this in China, for instance, and I had to explain to the Chinese what is this stuff in my bag, you know, because, because it's passed through the X-ray and it's like a bomb. It's like a <laughs> Yes, and that, last time I, 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 I told them that it's a Christmas tree because there are a lot of lights. <laughs> okay. So I tried to explain this an art piece and there is such a this and that, so it's get complicated, so Christmas tree is. <laughs> now, the, I think you, 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 you asked a question that is probably deeper the, the, the questions of, of coloniality. Operates so much in, in the, in the in here, you know how it operates in the in, in the south. In terms that, um, uh, you know, I don't want to project a kind of romantic uh, images of, of uh, to the south because the same complex of of, 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 uh, of for example, probably race is not a big issue there, but class it is. You know, yeah. so those things that are operates in a different manner here, which are here well, actually I think race. Well, you you all know it kind of okay, oh, high class, uh, but um, at the same time you uh, uh, I have been uh, I come for example from a low middle class uh, family, uh, and at the, at the moment you realize that you can use that the stereotype that is projected on you as a way to actually kind of empower yourself. You know, but I'm not saying that you know that you know for the Latino things and projected. But I think that you actually, you can use the stereotype or thing to project to act in toward your advance. The one moment you're selling stuff out there. It's a market idea, so where you put it, and you use any tools that you can to you know, further that. And that has to do with the way you look, the way your ideas are placed, how the way you talk, the way you write, the way that you, the, the kind of paper you choose, how you frame everything, it's just projecting you know, the concept forward. And you're very deliberate of that after a while, yeah? uh, and and and, and uh, you know, as an artist, you make those choices very, very evident in, in the way that you do it. You know how to operate. Now, it, you can use prejudices. Prejudice has you can you ask it, you seem, because if you have no symbolic capital, that's your symbolic capital. You know, so it's actually something that you can actually operate with it. Well, thank you so much for coming for staying, and please.